Hello and welcome to the Teach Music 21C podcast series. I'm Merlin Thompson, the creator of, and founder of Teach Music 21C, an amazing community of music studio teachers focused on empowering our students as lifelong music makers. And just to give everybody a heads up for more resources, please check out www.teachmusic21c.com. And today I'd like to welcome once more Lori Merrill from our executive team at Teach Music 21C. Welcome, Lori. Hi. Nice to be here. It's great to have you. And it's time for us to talk about the summer. Because here we are, um, students in Canada are just starting the summer vacation next week. Students in the U.S. have been on vacation for a couple of weeks now. Um, what kind of advice can we give students, parents, teachers for the summer planning that's called to, that may be underway or that's soon to start in, and to go into effect? What are your thoughts on summer plans? Well, I kind of think go back to the thought of growth and rest. And we've been doing a lot of growth through the year. And summer is, is for me, a rest. I need a break. They need a break. But you do want to keep some consistency going without making them feel like, you know, guilty for not being here every week because they have camps and a lot of different things that's good for their life. So we have a big concert before all of the end of the year things come because it, there's too much to compete with, with graduation and things like that. So about a month before that, we have a great big concert nice. and then we keep going. And then when school is out, then we go on summer, summer lessons, which is not as consistent and not as often, but I like to send them off with, you know, chill out pieces, yeah. write some compositions, you know, enjoy the piano, keep the pieces that you do have, don't lose anything, you know, read through a lot of music that you might um, enjoy later studying. So. And I appreciate that you're bringing up the growth and rest concept uh, because it's very tempting to think the summer is just going to be a continuation of the intensity of what's been going on during the year. And I always wonder what will happen to, to the growth, rest, and cycle if we make the summer a growth time of the year? And it kind of means that, well, when you get to September and October, then we're going to have to be taking some rest at that point. So I really appreciate that you're bringing that up. And I also appreciate that you've mentioned the whole chill out peace phenomena, because I can see that it's much, you know, a friend of mine was saying the other day, Merlin, you're too idealistic in your approach summer's coming up and kids are just going to be tempted by technology every single minute of the day. But I keep thinking, you know, for a parent to say, uh, th there's two expressions, uh, quit playing video games and go practice the piano. That's one thing they might say, which is kind of like, oh, really? And then there's the other, which is stop playing video games. And why don't you go chill out at the piano for a while? Yes. And, um, I don't know, we're sending them to technology for piano also. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of piano things to do on the computer. So, you know, so I think they can use the technology to chill out also. And these are musical kids in the studio. I mean, you know, not every, all of them love, love piano, love to practice, but they're coming and they have an invested interest. So to use the technology in the summer for chill out pieces. I, I think that that's a good idea. They might discover a lot of things doing that too. That's so right. not to be yeah. in with, but to use it to our advantage. You know, and I appreciate how chill out pieces take on lots of different characteristics. So there is the whole idea of it could be your newest piece. It could be your oldest piece. It could be your easiest piece. It could be your hardest piece. It can be something that we do for distraction, you know, just to because we want to get away from everything. It can be something we do for entertainment. And I and I appreciate that we come back, keep coming back to technology because when as kids are connected to technology, they get connected to other repertoire and other other pieces, you know, that they want to have a look at. So there is the random piece that shows up on YouTube or something like that. And then there's the piece that's been in the back of their mind 
for months or maybe years and they've never done anything with it. It's been there just kind of tempting them. So here's the summer, an opportunity to, to get all that kind of stuff going forward. Yes. Um, I have students that are so busy during the year and trying to keep up with piano and pieces and stuff and they'll start a big piece and they, and they don't finish it. So maybe for the concert, we do half of the piece. But right. now the summer, that's kind of a chill out. They're they're saying, well, maybe I can go further on this piece now. I can look at yeah. it and just pick out some notes and enjoy learning some more of it and finishing it. That's another chill out piece is finishing pieces that were too much for the fall. And I've got quite a few students that have enjoyed that. And if we come back to that growth and rest for a minute and just look at that, so what I always see about rest that's so powerful is that it facilitates periods of growth. So, you know, you have a couple of weeks of rest at whatever, at the beginning of your holiday term. And then it's like, oh, well, maybe I'll jump in and actually, you know, move a couple of things forward. So there is this ebb and flow that goes on with growth and rest that I really appreciate that we don't stay you know, for long periods necessarily in just one place. There is this idea that we've got ebb and flow with growth and rest. And because we rest, well, we have the, I guess, the foundation or the tools or the impetus then to, to look at that growth, growth moment as well. Yeah, that's a really nice way of putting that. I love that when they are in the growth period, we are giving them a lot of things to do and a lot of direction and place to go and get there. And and then when you rest, you you can um, you can use all of those resources in your rest state. That's a yeah. nice idea. I like that. Yeah, and 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 if we're looking for something that we're looking for the future as well that we're sowing these seeds now and kids are younger setting up those routines and attitudes and habits of investing in themselves so that you know 10 years from now or whatever 20 years from now or even five years now they're graduating from high school they're off to university and they've got this in their mind that yeah part of my wellness part of taking care of ourselves is not just working hard all the time. It's also taking those moments to make sure we've got cycles of growth and rest in our in our lives as a matter of personal wellness and, and well-being. Yes, I think it's nice to um, maybe tell the parents about that too, because if they get anxious about, you know, we're not progressing, we're not growing, and, and you can help them recognize this is a period of rest right now, and that's okay. And anything in life, if I've taken a break and teaching, you know, if there's just so much teaching and I'm just worn out and I feel like I just can't do it anymore. You take a week or, or a break and you come back, you're so refreshed and the growth period is even faster and more powerful because it's like a catapult into growth when yeah. you've taken that rest. And I'm sure, and that's the way it is for the students too. So they are both so important and you can't really have one without the other. Yeah, and, and this summer is a perfect place to just really reinforce that, you know, because they're not seeing teachers that often, most likely, um, that students can take, um, what would I call, autonomy. Students can take ownership of that process parents can be observing and appreciating that their children are doing those kinds of things. I see that there's, you know, there's a really great opportunity for, for the summer to be that part of the reflective cycle as well. So we're going to look at things and, and look back a little bit and just go, okay, what did I get done during the year? Uh, what, what kind of goals did I have? How did I set things out? Here I am in the summer what do I want to do for the next while? And it can be, it can be that growth rest goal cycle is what it really can be. So it's just really interesting that I could keep coming back to this conversation around growth and rest so often. Yes. And the, just to throw in the end of year report cards is a great place for that reflection to take place through the summer because yeah. you've gone through with everybody what we've accomplished what do you want to do and now is the time also i think students really appreciate it because they might not hear those words or understand those terms because they're always so busy of growth right. and rest 
So when they come to a lesson and I say, it's okay, this is a rest period. So this is this is the time to do those things. They yeah. look very they look so relieved. And I think it I think it helps our relationship too that that they know I appreciate that this that it's okay not to grow a lot right now. And I'm on your side. I'm I'm I uh, I understand this is where we are and you understand this too and it's okay. It's a good thing. Yeah. And and like you say, it helps them, it teaches them how to take care of themselves in life mm -hmm. also. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's so important what you're saying about sometimes kids are so much in the thick of things that they can't see what's going on. And that's really, that's so much the benefit of having a teacher around or parents around who are sharing their their thoughts, their insight, their their awareness. I, you know, I see kids all the time. They're, they're going like, oh, I'm not getting anywhere. I've been doing all this work. I'm not. And I just go, so here's what you have to, here's what you can't see because the incremental progress is so tiny and it's so subtle. But here's what I see when I step back and see what you've done over the last several months. So yeah, teachers reflective, teachers sharing their reflections with students. You know, we've got lots of things going on, obviously, in teaching. And it's a very exciting time to be a part, to be a teacher right now. I think this is just really amazing. Yeah. Everything from 21C that I've implemented this year and the past years is just every year is stronger and better. And um, it just makes me enjoy teaching so much. And I think you, you feel like you're in these people's lives for a long time. And if you can make a great impact and teach and learn also from them, it's just a wonderful cycle. Yeah, amazing. So, Lori Merrill. <laughs> Merlin Thompson, we've been here today. This is the Teach Music 21C podcast series. We've looked at this idea of summer planning and how that might involve the chill out peace phenomena, how it definitely we want to be aware of this growth and rest concept. And the, the last thing is that sharing our reflections with each other to, is our way then of bringing awareness and insight into this whole process of living life to the fullest, of making lifelong music making a part of what we do for our own personal well-being and so on. So yeah, we pretty much touched on some great topics this morning. Thanks, Lori, for joining in. Thank you so much. It's always a pleasure. <laughs> and to everybody else who has joined in today, we look forward to seeing you again. Merlin Thompson with Lori Merrill again today on the Teach Music Tone and the Sea podcast series. We hope to see you next time. Thanks so much.